Hey, Diane. Hello. <laughs> Diane, I don't think it's necessary to give that Zoom disclaimer anymore, is it? Um, and now why don't you just go ahead and do it for this one and then okay. we'll, we'll ask. In an effort to maintain compliance with CDC and Pinellas County guidelines for social distancing and general public safety, the city has set up Zoom virtual meetings to facilitate the broadcasting of the public art committee meetings and provide for public comments. 
It is Tuesday, August 11th, 2020 at 2 p.m. I am Joan Jennings, Chair of the Public Art Committee, and I would like to call the meeting to order. Uh, Marissa, can you, um, oh, first there's a, uh, an update. Our uh, member, Theodore Ianu has resigned from the committee. So there will be um, a, a slot open. Uh, Marissa, can you call the roll, please? Ms. Gregory? Yes, here. Mr. Meals? Here. Ms. Robinson? Here. Ms. Jennings? Here. Mr. Stackhouse? Here. Ms. Oberlander? Here. Here. Okay, we have a quorum. Um, the review of the meeting attendance procedures. Diane, do you want to just give a quick overview? Yes, I just wanted to remind everybody because of the sunshine laws and everything, and I'm sure you all are, are very familiar with this procedure already, but I just wanted to um, let you know in case anybody is taking any vacation time or gonna be away for any reason um what we um the procedure is is that if you're going to be absent from one of the scheduled um public art committee meetings then you should uh, let me know as soon as possible and then i let the chair know um ahead of time you know before the meeting that uh, a particular member will be absent and it's really important to do that because if we you know we, it's important to have a quorum so that we can you know conduct the business and everything so just in case everybody wants to take a vacation at the same time, <laughs> we, we need to know about that. So um, please just, you know, do that procedure. And I will say in the past, um, you know, we have actually uh, only allowed um, uh, as far as non-attendance goes, it has been for medical reasons only, but, you know, just go ahead and whatever uh, your reason is for missing, let us know, and uh, I'll make th that, uh, you know, claim or, or she'll make the decision, you know, at that time, but that's what it's been in the past. Um, so if anybody has any questions, they can contact me after the meeting and, you know, on one-on-one, -on -one. okay? But, and that is in the ordinance, so always refer to your ordinance, you know, for things, and if there's something in there that you don't understand, Please call us and let us know, and we'll be happy to discuss it with you one on one. Thank you. Thank you, Diane. Uh, Mark, do we have any uh, guests? We have one person in attendance. Okay. Um, uh, I'd like to uh, ask for a motion to approve the minutes from the July 14th meeting. I move that the minutes be approved. Trish, can I get a second? I'll second. Okay. Lucianne, okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any any discussion amendments? Okay, great. Yeah, uh, Joan, on page six, um, okay. public the second uh, sentence in progress report on projects. Uh, mm -hmm. Public Works reviewed the current sculpture and discerned that it would not be able to be reworked to fit their needs. So the project needs to go back to the drawing board. It really should read public works was not able to review the current sculpture. So the project needs to go back to the drawing board. Okay. All right. So um, Marissa, you'll make that amendment. Yes. Okay. All right. So uh, do I hear a motion to accept as amended? I move that they be accepted as amended. Trish, in a second. Lucianne? Second. I second. Okay. Lucianne, you seconded, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just checking. Okay. Um, all in favor? Aye. As amended. Okay. Oh, oh, oh uh, I have, I'm sorry. I have one. It's very minor, but on page three, uh, da, da, let me find it. Where did it go? Oh, uh, down below the approval of updates, it says Mrs. Ms. Stackhouse suggested it should be Mr. Stackhouse. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> you didn't 
notice that? <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah, there is no, is, there is no Mrs. Stackhouse. Uh, I don't think we need a motion on this. That's a, no. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, current project updates. Um, uh, Bill, you got anything for us? Yeah, I was able to meet with Kyle Pierce, and we discussed both the um, recycling project, uh, fish, and also the pelicans. He has the materials and has started the Pelicans. Uh, he was going to reach out to you, Joan. He said within the next week to 10 days, but you might want to put a tickler on there to give him a call okay. uh, next week. Okay, I met with him last Thursday. Um, so he is moving forward. He has an anticipated date of October 31st as a uh, finish date on that. Beautiful. And he is looking to come up with a, a, a scale model for me for the fish uh, recycling bin. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, he's hoping to get that to me in the next uh, few weeks. And he has anticipated the October 31st deadline for getting that completed as well. Exactly. So hopefully we'll be able to take the, uh, the, the model that he prepares for us and get the Department of Public Works to look at it. I have him looking at a much more open concept so that mm -hmm. it can easily be emptied and also be power washed um, because it is going to hold garbage. Perfect. So, okay. Recyclable okay. garbage. Okay. So that's an update on those two. Okay. Okay. Um, I spoke to Elizabeth Indianos and uh, the uh, scaffolding arrived, and I believe it's over in the cultural center, Diane. Yes, it is. Okay. And, uh, you know, the work's proceeding. You know, it's. Uh, Obviously, with all the COVID and everything else, it's experienced some delays. And um, Diane, do you have an update on the art boxes? Uh, the art boxes will be shipped on Monday. And uh, so I'm not sure how long it'll take in transit. There's 20 of them. They're on um, one truck, he said. Mm -hmm. So um, Top Function is going to let him know where he needs to um, drop them off. OK. Uh, or anything else that uh, was, he in? was he in? I have a question about the art boxes. I was um, on the docks just recently and noticed, I don't know how long they've been there, but I noticed for the first time a series of banners on each light pole, Greek and American flag right. alternating. Um, there is not one on the lamppost that Theo's prototype is on. And I'm wondering, are those going to come down for our selected artwork? Are we going to work in a different location? How do, how do, do those um, two? I, I believe that they can coexist because the banners, I think, are all facing the street. And we want all of the art boxes to face away from the street. Does that make sense? I don't. I don't think one one will interfere with the other. It looked. It looked to me as though the solar doomahickey. Oh, okay. Is that that may or may not interfere? I don't know. I was just surprised to see all those flags up there right. and wondered whether we need to find a new location for our artwork. I'll have okay. to check with, I can check with Tom and see okay. if that's an issue and everything, but thanks for bringing that up. Yeah, thanks very much, Lucia. Have we actually selected the locations for each of these art boxes? Um, not yet. I was talking, uh, you know, I think, uh, you know, I was talking to Diane. I think maybe if um, you guys did a drive-by you know, or a walk by down at the sponge docks and uh, maybe, you know, taking a look at uh, some, uh, you know, more likely polls. Uh, we're going to be doing 15 of them and we're going to be taking down the one that's up because it's a different size. So. Oh, what happened? What's Jen? What happened? Yeah, she's frozen, so we'll just give her a moment. I'm curious, why only 15 will be put up if we're ordered 20 of them? Right. Right. So we're right, right, right now for this first 
uh, part of the project, uh, we were thinking of doing uh, 15 and hold, you know, down at the sponge docks and holding uh, five back for other locations and or as backups if anything happens. And then once, you know, once we see how everything's working, we might order some more, but, uh, you know, Bill, you look like you have a question and then- Yeah, I just, I, I, I was trying to figure out if we wanted to concentrate them so heavily in the sponge docks or, you know, I know there's been a lot of effort along that uh, alternate 19 between downtown and the sponge docks plus the downtown, I, you know, that's why I had the question if we've decided where to place these yet. Uh, Trish? Yeah, I, I did a walk uh, down Dodecanese all the way down to one end to the other, and there are lots of uh, poles there. There's plenty of poles to accommodate the BART boxes. And I thought that we wanted them put on a walkable area rather than a drive-through. And that, <clears throat> I don't think that many people walk down uh, alternate 19 to Dodecanese, do they, between downtown? I don't know. But um, I, I thought that we wanted to concentrate on the docks and the walkable area. Well, That's my thought. Robert? Um, has the, uh, the, the crossing of the, the uh, bike paths in, in uh, Tarpon Avenue, is that a, a viable location for this? There's people that do walk there. Um, and uh, you know that that two block area of, of uh, uh, Tarpon Boulevard could could certainly handle some of those. There's yeah, well, we I'm sorry, we talked about the bike path before, and that's county property, so I don't. Yeah, I know the bike path, but but on the corners, you know, oh, where okay. occurrences and and uh, you know, so that you box the four corners on on city property. That might be a good idea to look into. Yeah, so that's kind of a, a centralized location right. for for uh, uh, downtown Tarpon. And there's right. a lot of walking traffic right through there. Yeah. There, yeah, there are, I counted, I walked down there, uh, I counted about six light poles down between uh, Tarpon Ave and um, MLK. Well, I didn't write down to MLK because it was blocked at that time, but um, there were six that I counted that would be possible. Mm -hmm. On, if it's on our property, I wasn't sure if it was on the county property or our city property. Right. The light poles. So, Robert, can I say again? Uh, have we considered uh, how these are positioned one next to the other? Are they going to be a continuous grouping of them or are they going to be scattered where, you know, and if there's a continuous grouping, they become more of a, of a spectacle, I think, than if they're just scattered around. Uh, but, right, I mean, that, you're exactly right. That was the original concept to create like a, a almost like a trail of them or a Yes, walk, yes. Uh -huh. You yeah. know, to build that, you know, that, that visual impact so people could walk along and, you know, rather than, you know, uh, you know, because they, they deserve to be looked at. That was the idea. They're meant for pedestrians. So yeah, that's yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think I think what happens is somebody sees one or two, and then they said, "Oh, there's another one," and then they all of a sudden go on a uh, treasure hunt. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Anyone else have any suggestions or ideas? But yeah, I think the concentration of them will be down at the uh, along the Deccanies, and then. Um, but that's another good idea. We'll have to take a closer look at that intersection, Robert and see if there are poles and, you know, places that we can, uh, you know, put them. Um, okay. Uh, Lucianne has a question, John. Oh, I'm sorry, Lucianne, yeah, I was looking at my notes. Uh, just to piggyback on um, Robert's idea about the intersection at Tarpon Avenue, mm -hmm. the same intersection at Lemon Street and at Orange Street those are becoming more and more frequent mm -hmm. pedestrian pathways. And um, if we like the Tarpon Avenue intersection, we might also look at lemon and orange as well. Okay. I, I think that's, that's a good idea because my right. studio is right there on Center Street on, on the bike path. So uh, it, I, I notice a lot of uh, foot traffic going mm -hmm. uh, past orange and, and, uh, and down to uh, uh, MLK or Lemon Street or MLK even uh, is, mm -hmm. is kind of important to have some. So maybe you don't need 
15 at the docks. I don't know. Well, I, you know, again, you know, as Trish said, there's, there's more than enough poles down there and, and, you know, uh, we do want to create that impact, you know, of having, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, a series of the, of them, especially at night when they're illuminated. So I, th I think, you know, and you have to remember that they're, you know, because they are solar, they're not wired, so they can always be moved. Uh, it's, you yeah. know, for Tom Funchen, but, you know, we can, you know, we can get I, uh, somebody to uh, move them rel with relative ease. Yeah, it, no, it seems to I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Robert. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm sorry. Well, it just seems to me that, that Dota Kinesis is going to uh, advantage lots of tourists. Mm -hmm. Seems to me. Uh, I think the people that normally are there aren't going to look up. <laughs> They're going about their business in a way. But I think downtown Tarpon, that is for the people who live here. Mm -hmm. So, so it, 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 there's a slightly different audience, I think, between uh, those two, those two mm -hmm. locations. And that, that's something we really need to take into consideration is, is giving something to the local residents as well as just the, the, right. the tourists. Well, I think, you know, I think that the, um, you know, down at the sponge docks, you, you do get residents as well, you know, that patronize yes. the restaurants. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it's not totally uh, a tourist area. No, I, I understand, yeah. And, uh, you know, I think one of the things about having the illuminated feature is to try to uh, bring more people down to the sponge docks at night by creating this illuminated art walk. You know, it's, uh, that was kind of the original concept of it. But as I said, we can, uh, we can experiment because they are easily moved. If we put them down at the sponge docks and realize that maybe it's not having the impact we thought it was, we could move them. Or, you know, if, uh, if we put them elsewhere in the city and, you know, it's, again, it's either working or not working. That's something we can always re-examine because as I said, I, I you know, they're, they're not hardwired to anything, so they're relatively easy to, uh, you know, to move around. Well, being able to move them is really a, a, a great um, uh, thing with those because you could, you you know, you could almost do it. Where's Waldo? Where are they going to pop up? <laughs> That's an idea too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like where's the art box? <laughs> <laughs> you know, one season they could be all around the. Uh, Spring by you, you know. Right, and, right. You know when, uh, so they, it, it's something that you possibly could see them as something that's maybe not quite as. Maybe you keep the same artwork in it, but the location changes. Mm -hmm. So that I mean, they could be moved down to the the bayou when uh, they put all the uh, um, what is it? Those pre epiphany uh, uh, right. lighted candles along the walkway and stuff. So you right. know, there's there's a lot of that kind of thing where they could be um, kind of like an event. Right. Well, I sort apologize for my nearsightedness, but I skipped the item on the review and approval of the uh, master plan. And uh, Lucianne, I know you had made quite a few comments on it. Do you want to, uh, you know, uh, address, you know, the, the comments that you made? Um, my, my comments were um, sort of scattered, but the main point I'd like to make, if I have the, this opportunity, is to organize the projects just a little bit uh, differently from the way they were presented in this draft. Um, mm -hmm. Most of the projects that are enumerated in the master plan um, were begun some time ago. And in fact, I think predate most of our participation on this committee. Mm -hmm. So I've suggested that there be a category called approved and ongoing projects. Okay, I saw that. Yeah, that's, that's... Which includes really all of those things listed except for two. Mm -hmm. And the two that I would propose moving into the category that is proposed projects would be the Bahamian Sponger, since that's still in an exploratory state, mm -hmm. and the um, public safety uh, 
project that Chief Cochin has proposed. Right. Those, those to me seem materially different from, right. from all the others. And I would like to see them listed along with all of those uh, locations that we've talked about. Right. Well, the, the Bahamian Sponger statue was presented to the Board of Commissioners as part of the annual report and is therefore considered approved. It was not um, acted on by the board. Diane, do you, is, does, the, does the presentation to the Board of Commissioners without an objection constitute an approval? I'll have to check with Tom Trask. Okay, yeah, that's, yeah, because uh, uh, I was under the impression that if they had any objections to anything we presented, that it would be, it would be raised at the, at the meeting when the presentation was made. Okay. And uh, uh, while we're on that subject, uh, I know, Michiela, you had raised an objection about calling it a sponge hooker. Mm -hmm. However, that's the historically correct term. And I, but I think uh, Lucianne might have given us another option, which is just calling it a sponger statue. Yeah. That I've, sounds good. I just think that the word hooker connotes something that we don't want to be associated with. Uh, so if it, if sponge diver doesn't work, sponger, uh, Bahamian sponger sounds good. But I, I was telling my husband about it and I was like, you know, it just doesn't have the right sound. And we're trying to do this in order to be sensitive to people of color. And any connotation of something that's unsavory would really defeat the whole purpose of spending all this money on trying to make people feel included. Right. I agree. Well, Lucienne, Lucienne, you were, I'm sorry. I, I agree. I think um, that the, it can be worded. It can be a, um, a hooking device, something like that. But I, I think hooker has too much meaning for all of us today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Would, uh, I, I also want to make a pitch that we really haven't done a lot of exploration into the background on this. We haven't brought in um, the Historical Society, for example, and other resources that can help us shape this project. That's why, at least to me, it seems to be still in very exploratory stages. Well, I, I've personally done a lot of research but, you know, again, under Sunshine Laws, I was kind of leery to share it with everybody. But maybe we could have uh, some kind of workshop that would just deal with the statue and, and involve, uh, you know, the historical society and other people with, um, you know, longtime residents. Uh, I know I was talking to um, Athena Sardulius, and she said her father worked with the uh, sponge hookers. So, uh, you know, so she had a lot of firsthand, you know, knowledge from her dad. So maybe we could just try to get that into a forum where everything is presented to the public uh, instead of, you know, as I said, you know, my own kind of digging around in history. Because I know I've been sharing a lot of it with Diane, but, you know, again, the, that's kind of where it's been sitting. I've sent out quite a few um, things to you all too about them. So, you know, we do have a pretty hefty amount of information, at least in photos, you know, and some historical data on it. I mean, I'm not sure how much there is, but, you know, that's fine too. I think it does need to be vetted some more. Right. Well, Robert? There, there, there are more communities that, that had. Um, uh, Bahamian spongers, uh, to use that, just shorten the term there. Uh, like, I, I think they existed in Key West, and, uh, and I, I'm, I know they existed in the Bahamas as well, I mean, right. because they're Bahamian, you know, they came from here to do that. So, mm -hmm. so uh, uh, there, there's liable to be more information on it. And, oh, yeah, there's, there's quite a bit places. of uh, yeah. information. It just, you know, as I said, Diane, I've been sharing a lot with Diane, and she's been sending it out, so... Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know uh, Lucianne brought up the fact that a lot of the um, divers in the Bahamas were Greeks. Yes, they were. Mm -hmm. 
So, um, you know, one of the things that we might consider doing is perhaps to come up with a concept that wouldn't be particularly ethnic, just honor the, the profession rather than, you know, giving it any particular physical features. So, uh, because I know that they were a mix of, um, you know, African Americans and uh, Greek divers. And I know that there was a large colony. Uh, I, I had lunch with Dudley Sally and he, he pointed out a, uh, uh, a lot of photographs uh, and a book in the library uh, that there was a very large colony up in uh, Bailey's Bluff. And whether we consider that tarpon or not, you know, we, we get into some, you know, uh, you know, dicey kind of areas here. Um, so um, so uh, maybe Diane will we'll see if we can get a workshop together to discuss this, get, you know, different members of the community together and the historical society. Is that what everybody wants to do another workshop? Is that what I'm hearing? Sure. Yeah, when, when, what, what, um, what month? Would everybody be any feelings about this? Is there any? I know I'm not going anywhere. I don't know about anybody else. Whether any about anybody has any travel plans. Well, uh, under new business, Joan. Under new business, you have uh, reassigned the Bahamian Sculpture Project. So maybe one of the um, PAC committee members might want to take it as a, you know, as a chair, and then they can maybe get those other people together, do the research, and then present it at one of the uh, the PAC meetings. Right. Anyone like to take this on? Anyone? Nobody? Nobody wants to deal with it? Trish? Yeah, I'll do it. You'll do it? Okay. Okay, well, let's go back to the master plan. Lucianne, did you want to continue your comments on the master plan? Uh, that was the primary thing asking, um, you know, I'll, I'll yield to the group on the uh, Bahamians sponger. Um, I do think the public safety program is proposed as is as are all the others that we've listed. Um, I also want to point out that we keep talking about underserved underrepresented areas. So I've added that mm -hmm. with a note referencing Mishaila's um, University of Kentucky study that she distributed to all of us uh, right. and the example of the city of Austin, Texas and how they quote, drill down into various areas of the town to um, make sure that every neighborhood, every um, every area of town is represented in the public arts program. I think we need to spend a little more time doing that. Um, whether we write it as a goal to spend more time in the plan or, or how, but I, I don't think we should let that go by the wayside. Okay, do you wanna take that over? Ha, um, do you wanna take that project over to identify some of the underserved areas? Well, I think it's it's all to do with the GIS uh, mapping that um, Bill has pretty much been a lead on. Okay. Um, but yeah, I, I can take a gander at that. Um, okay. If if am am I um, am I allowed to say talk with Paramita and absolutely people in the city who have access? Sure. Absolutely. Yeah, just contact me, Lucienne, and I'll put you in touch with them. Okay. Whoever you need. Yep, I'll give it a start. And um, I might, I, I, I think I may need to ask that Bill come in on it with yeah, his absolutely. greater expertise on that, please. Okay. Could absolutely help assist. Fabulous. Okay, great. Okay. Is there anything else on the master plan? 
Does everybody agree with Lucianne's uh, suggestions? Because I, I would really like to get an approval on this. This has been this has been hanging fire for over a year now. They look they look fine to me. I would I would make a motion that we approve the master plan as um, amended. And, and I, I second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Oh, we've got unanimous. Okay. Wonderful. Can I get a clarification on some of the changes that were discussed? Sure, Marissa. Okay, so let's see. The Bahamian sponge diver statue, um, is that just being listed as a location now and we're deleting the paragraph there? No, uh, we are, we're changing the, where is it? Page six, I think. We're changing it from, we're removing the word diver and just calling it the Bahamian Sponger statue. But the it's staying in the document where it is now, not Lucian's suggestion. Right, but it's gonna be under proposed, right, Lucian? Or approved, we have to... Um, that, the section that you have labeled proposed in the original draft, right. I'm asking be approved and ongoing. Right, that's fine, I think. So So where, where would we- Yes, I think it is the consensus of the group um, not to go with my suggestion, but to make it an approved and ongoing project. Okay, so it would stay where it is. Yeah. Okay. And, and then, then the same question regarding the public safety memorial garden. Was the end? I'm proposing that move to the list of locations that are um, being considered in the future. And I assume we'll begin to prioritize those in time. Okay. Okay, so that'll be moved down under the public art on city property section. And would you like the paragraph included or for it to be just part of the bullet points that are already listed in that section? Um, makes no difference to me. Everything else is a bullet, but I don't have any strong feelings. Okay. Okay, I'll just make it a bullet then. Right. Okay. Where's the you're all set? Um anything else? Think, yes. Yes. Thank you very much. Okay. And uh, and I guess the only other changes were kind of procedural to update the uh, uh, the committee members. And I guess, you know, since most of this was worked on when Theo was there, we'll let's just leave him on. Lucien? Uh, one other minor thing. Um, in the very beginning of the document, we have the master plan from this date to that date. I had proposed making it 2020 to 2025 just for clarity's sake. That's my only yeah, other comment. I, I thought we had done that, but thank you. Yes. Yes, 2020 to 2025. Okay. All right, onward and upward. Okay. So then, all right, so we, uh, the next uh, item to address on the, on the, on the statue project. Okay, uh, moving down to new business, we have a discussion on the sponge docks gateway signs. Um, I believe uh, Diane emailed you the link to the uh, Board of Commissioners meeting where um, the sponge docks gateway sign was discussed and, um, and it was suggested that the uh, Public Art Committee become involved. Um, I think what is is being looked at in terms of our contribution is to um, create a poll to see what the uh, Tarpon Springs residents would like to see on on the sign. Um, Diane and I worked on a um, a, a poll, a questionnaire. And uh, Diane, that was emailed out, right? Yes, this one. And did everybody have a chance to see that and read it? Yeah. Yes. Okay, does anybody have any? Oh, and one of the things that um, 
uh, I had spoken to uh, a couple of commissioners about is to um, wait the responses so that a resident, a residential vote would count as one, a business vote would count as three, and a property owner would count as five because, uh, you know, it would be the people who have, quote, you know, the most skin in the game and should probably, you know, have a little more of a say in, you know, what goes on, you know, that will affect their property and their businesses. Does that seem to, uh, is everybody agreeable to that? I'm unclear as I, in listening to the meeting, I thought the survey was going to concentrate on um, stakeholders in the sponge docks area. Is that not uh, right? Well, that would be the point of doing the weighted poll. In other words, the, the sponge dock stakeholders would have the most say, but you know, it was indicated to me that they wanted to get the, um, I spoke to a couple of the commissioners and they wanted to also find out, you know, uh, comments from business owners and the residents in general. So who's gonna do this survey? Diane? You know who's we, gonna um, at, in Tarpon Arts, we have constant contact and we have the ability to do a, uh, um, a survey uh, in that software. And so I just recently did it for Tarpon Arts and uh, we could do that for the gateway signs too. The other handout you had was just kind of like some samples of gateway signs from other areas in the country. And that was just basically to give an idea of you know, mm -hmm. the possibilities. Um, because we know that if you're going to do a call to artists, you've got to have all kinds of specifics. So because there's so many different people that probably have opinions about this, um, we felt like you know, our contribution could be to do a survey to try to gather the information from the residents, the business owners, the um, and also, you know, the people who own, you know, buildings in, mm -hmm. the, in the general area, but it also gives anybody in Tarpon Springs, you know, um, uh, opportunity to weigh in too. So I think it could be very effective in helping the board of commissioners, you know, make the decision on which way they want to go. And then of course it would be turned over to the engineers to, you know, to create something. Right, uh, Robert, you were at hands, hands up first. Uh, yeah, I'm uh, looking at these. These are these are quite uh, uh, kind of, but uh, uh, what I'm trying to find almost an industrial looking signpost. You know, they lo almost look like something that would come out of a stock uh, uh, warehouse or something like that. You know, and that I, did you mention a call to artists and. Uh, yeah. But we have to have what they want or what elements they want to see in it before we can do that. Yeah, right. um, but that's that that's what I'm asking about because uh, um, it's there. If if you call if you're having a call for artists, it seems like they're going to be very very different than these examples. Well, I mean, the I examples seem to me to be engineering wise. You can have a a gate that goes over the road. You can have gates that are on the side of the road or just one side of the. Right. You know, and then then when you have a call to artists, you know, you're you're allowed to get a lot of wild different interpretations of that. Right. And, uh, uh, yeah, Michiela, yeah. did you have a comment? And then uh, 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 from what I'm gathering from Robert, uh, maybe what you're not getting is the survey would ascertain: Do we want a sponge diver? Do we want a turtle? Do we want an osprey or whatever those things are that on the yeah. list? And as far as the survey, I was thinking, I know Tarpon Arts has a great mailing list and that's awesome, but possibly in order to reach more people that are in the neighborhood that are not affiliated with that, maybe we could post the survey on next door as well um, and, and have people identify if they're a resident or if they're a business owner in the survey, like make that one of the questions so that we can- Yeah, I think it. that was at the, at the top of the survey yeah. form. Oh, okay. At the very top. But also, no, that's a good, you know, we can, we can put it in multiple places. One of the things like my Tarpon Arts, you know, database is probably not going to be a, a good one for this, but 
our economic development uh, director, Karen Lemons, um, she has a whole big list of mm -hmm. different names and addresses that we can, uh, email addresses that we can send it out to when they did that thousand dollar grant, you know, for the business community. Mm -hmm. So she has all those and that would be a great database to send it out to as well. Right, and I think the, the Tarpon Chamber would probably, mm -hmm. I'm sure they would help us out with, a, with an email. Yeah. Trish? Mm -hmm. Trish? Oh yeah, I have a <clears throat> I have a question. I'm a little confused on this because, <clears throat> excuse me, this was brought up to the um, the pack a year ago, over a year ago, before some of the members of the committee were on board, and uh, we had quite discussions about it then, and then it was kind of uh, dropped at that point um, because they couldn't decide whether it was a commercial sign or an art project or what it was, but my question is, if we take this on, who, um, who's responsible for the financing? Where is the financing going to come from? Uh, I believe it was mentioned at the uh, meeting that it's going to be a capital project of the cities. So I think I think uh, my interpretation at any rate was, was, was that the, the PAC was just going to be uh, kind of a, a consultant you know, uh, reaching out and getting the feedback from the community. And, you know, in terms of all those components, you know, maybe, you know, you'd want a sign that doesn't have anything. You know, it might just be, uh, you know, uh, you know, a sign with, with wording on it. I, you know, I don't know, you know, if, if we want something or if the public wants something that has, you know, sponges hanging off of it or, you know, <laughs> But th at the end of the day, uh, you know, it, this has always been a, a bit of a quandary because it's like a chicken and an egg situation because there were a lot of um, engineering and environmental, um, you know, considerations that have to be brought into play. So uh, while we can do the polling and make suggestions, it's ultimately going to be, uh, you know, what can be done in terms of the actual engineering of this sign. I mean, it has to have a certain clearance. It has to have a certain wind resistance. Uh, there are a lot of technical requirements that have already been defined. And, you know, as Trish said, you know, we had discussed it in the past and then we kind of took it out of our purview because of all of these, you know, technical and engineering considerations. So it's, you know, I think it's, it's, you know, our task is just to, you know, determine what, you know, the, the citizen, citizenry, the business owners, and the property owners would like to see. Lucianne? Uh, yes, I actually, my conclusion from listening to the meeting was that our, our role was a bit narrower. My understanding is that we were to help develop this survey and that um, Mr. Robertson, who is project manager for the city, would take the lead on actually doing performing the survey. That our role was simply to advise on um, elements of design to be included in the survey. That's fine for me. And that's a good point. Is like if you see, like I mean, Joan and I worked on this. Just you know, briefly to kind of give you all an idea of what some you know questions could be. So if you have any additional questions that you would like to add to this, you know, while we're trying to put this together, please by all means email them to me directly, and we'll add them. So I mean, I think you all could be a great help to come up with some additional things that maybe we haven't thought of yet. So so what I understand then, this is really kind of a uh, an online charrette. Yes. <laughs> Where people say, oh, I want a restaurant on top of it, right? <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, if anybody has any comments or additions to that uh, survey, please email them directly to Diane and she will come up with a consensus piece. And then, uh, Diane, maybe you could mail out the final and then uh, as Lucianne suggested, we'll get it over to Bob Robertson. Sure. Uh, Trish? Oh, okay. Um, 
I remember at the end of the meeting that um, it was kind of put back into Mr. Robertson's hands and he was supposed, he was said that he would meet with the PAC to determine how we go on from there. That's what I remember from the ending of that meeting. Right. Put back in his hands to meet with us to come up with something. So right. How is that supposed to happen? Well, I think I think since we're just preparing a, a poll, I think that uh, I don't know whether it's necessary for him to meet with us and say that he'd like us to do a poll. I don't know what what other feedback we might get from him in person. Okay, so that's all we're doing right now is just getting the poll the uh, polling done. Okay. Right. Robert, you had a, your hand up. <clears throat> no, I just wanted to, to make sure that, that I understand that there's not going to be a call for artists on this project. No, not that. No, uh, okay, good. Yeah. Another whole can of worms. <laughs> another, another whole can of worms. Okay. Um, all right. Now, the we're coming to the art for the art boxes. Okay. Now, wish me well here, folks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, it was uh, quite a success to get as many entries as we got. Right. Very, very pleased to see that. Okay. So let me see if I can. I, I did it before. We have faith in you, John. Okay. Why isn't it showing up? Uh, Air screen. Let's see. Okay, here we go. Okay, you got all of these uh, previously as thumbnails. And what I've done is just to prepare a PowerPoint so that you can see them in more detail on your screen. And uh, so I, what I would strongly suggest that you do is if you see a slide and they're all numbered, uh, mark down whether you want, whether you think that the image is worthy of pre being put in the art box. Uh, I'm gonna go through these. I'm gonna give each image about five or six seconds. If anybody feels that they would like an image to remain on the screen longer than that, please let me know, okay? This is this is the first image and all of these correlate with the thumbnails that you got from Diane. Okay. John, and can I ask uh, one uh, question? Oh, sure. okay. Robert, I-, I, yeah. I, I, I Are ready. people allowed to have more than one entry? Yes. Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay. And uh, obviously these are all, you know, you know, anonymous for the most part. And, but I think you could pick out stylistically whether an yeah. image comes from a particular artist. Okay. I have a question, Joan. Is there any way that we can have access to this PowerPoint so that we can see them um, in large format? Sure, uh, it's pretty big. So I'd have to give it to you like on a thumb drive. Oh. So I could, I could uh, drop it off with Diane and uh, she could copy it for you. Would that work? Or sure. uh, can, you, if, can your um, computer take about eight, eight megabytes? I don't know. It's more, it's more, it's more than that. Is it? Okay. Yeah. If you save it as a PDF, it will make the file much, much smaller. So in PowerPoint, if you go to save as and save as PDF, that right. shrinks the Whoops. file size and you can attach it to an email. Okay, okay. we'll try that. That's what I do Great. with my students. Okay, we'll, get, we'll give that a shot. Thanks, Michiela. You're welcome. Okay. Thank you. Uh, are, are people seeing the, the images advance? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, you, you should have image uh, three on your screens now? Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. Can, okay. can you go back to two since I was talking and not looking? Okay. Thank you, thank you. All right, I'll say next to give you a heads up, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, next. Next.
next. Next. Next. Next. Next. Next. Next. Oops, sorry. Next. 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 I think you guys can figure out when the next one is up. What medium is that one? Is it a photo or is it a painting? Um, I believe, um, I would say that it's probably a, some, a photo that was manipulated. Mm -hmm. It is. Okay, thank you. Okay. Excuse me. Question. Does anybody know what these are? What these... No. Looks like a failed resort. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's a... <laughs> I haven't been able to figure out what they are, what they represent.
Oops, sorry. Twitchy fingers. <laughs> Sorry. There you have it. Okay, I'll try to uh, follow Achilla's suggestion and if I can get it into a more manageable uh, data size, I'll uh, send it to Diane to email out to everybody, so.
Uh, so I guess what we're doing is we're picking uh, 30 with 10 alternates for the uh, for the 15 boxes. Okay, any any comments or questions about any of these before we move on? Michiela? Would you like us to put them in order of preference, like front load the ones that we really like at the top um, for the 30? Uh, Diane, would that help with your compilation? I can't hear you. Everybody is what? Um, I think what I'm going to do is take everybody's list and then give you all the numbers that appear, you know, the most frequently kind of thing. But um, I guess it'll be interesting to see, you know, with all of you, you know, which ones you prefer. So mm -hmm. um, what I can do is give you all you know, the ones that are the same, and then also send you out all each of your um, lists as well. So, you know, maybe you can discuss if, if need be. I, I don't know how we're going to do this, you know, we'll have well, to see. I would, I would uh, Lucian, I'm sorry, go ahead. So would you like us to rank them on that sheet? Like this is my number one choice, two, three, four, all the way down to 40? That would probably be the best because what I can do is once I see which ones are you have in common, I could add those for sure and then take each of your, then go to like everybody's top five, you know, then go to everybody's top 10, you know, that sort of thing. Right. When we get down to the last 10, those, those are going to be, you know, like really, uh, you know, alternate choices, like from 31 to 40 is going to be the, uh, you know, maybe next time or. So yes, well, the, what Miguel said was, um, you know, put them in the order from one to 30 and it's your favorite being number one, you know, and then going down from there. We'll figure it out. Does that okay. make sense? All right, any other questions or comments about this? Okay, Lucienne, um, it's the uh, dumpster and sandbag corral locations. Yes, thank you. This was an interesting um, discovery tour of Tarpon Springs nether regions. A <laughs> um, <laughs> um, couple of words of introduction. My understanding is that we have gone to the dumpsters as mural sites um, as a substitute for the artist alley that was originally proposed for um, the hibiscus to Safford Avenue passageway. Mm -hmm. um, and since we ran into so much trouble with the insurance requirement, it was determined that um, city on sites, uh, in this case dumpsters, were, um, were eligible without insurance requirements for an artist to, to use. So um, I guess our decision is first, do we want to advance this project into a, a priority for the year? Um, and then uh, lots of other, um, details and decisions to be made, mostly because of the location and the nature of, of dumpsters. Mm -hmm. So um, nature of dumpsters, probably the most unsightly part of the dumpster is the gate that's either mesh or um, fencing that gives access to uh, the dumpster to be dumped. Um, the corrals are the three other sides and they are essentially concrete blocks. Some are stuccoed nicely and painted. Others are just in their um, cement block form. Also in the nature of dumpsters, they are generally placed out of the way and out of sight. So we immediately eliminated three of the original dumpsters, one of which is at the cemetery. It's on a dead end road that nobody uses and 
hemmed in by a lot of brush. So that would not be at all accessible to the public. Um, at the public safety building, the dumpster there is in wonderful condition, would be a great mural surface, but it's in a restricted area that the public uh, is not allowed into. Okay. Same essentially goes for the dumpster at the rec center on Lime Street. Um, it, is, it is not available to the public. So we eliminated those three right off the bat. Um, the dumpster at Craig Park, uh, which I think you have pictured, is the exception to the rule in that it has three totally unobstructed sides to the corral and can lend itself easily to an artist um, doing a mural and to the public for seeing the mural in a um, three-part design. Some of the other murals, um, Diane and I talked about whether we should um, propose two or three sides. I erred on the side of three when it was at all physically possible, just because I think it gives a sense of discovery if you have one of the three sides a little bit hard to look at. Um, hopefully the two sides that are easily visible to the public would be interesting enough that a viewer would follow that around and peek around the corner to a side that maybe is not so easily uh, seen. For example, at Sunset Beach, um, the dumpster is on the entrance drive into the park. It's over on the left as you drive into the park. Um, two sides are visible. The third really is waterfront and you can get to it, but it's you know just a little bit of a, a magical mystery tour. Same thing applies to the one at Sisler Park. Um, the one at the sports complex on Jasmine Avenue is another story. It butts right up to a huge bit of undergrowth that would take bulldozers to, to clear that backside. So it just has to. So um, that is pretty much the scope of each of the dumpsters. Um, there are three in town that just have one visible wall. Um, if, you, if you look at the um, group that is City Hall, the library and the dog park, <laughs> the one at City Hall is, has just one visible side and it is very often hemmed in by city trucks. So I really question whether we want to contract with an artist to do one side of the dumpster, which may in fact be obscured 80% of the time. Um, the library likewise has just one visible um, side. And the dumpster at the dog park is nice and big, um, but it also has just one visible side. The surprise we ran into is um, the structure at the dog park, which uh, hold, it holds sand if we have a hurricane and the city is making sand available for sandbags. And that, that seemed to me to be um, a great opportunity for a mural. It could be clever. Um, part of it will be obscured maybe a few days a year with the sand, but... Um, I would think an artist could have a lot of fun with that structure, both back and front. Mm -hmm. So those are possible locations um, open to your reactions. Okay. Michaela? I, I wanted a point of clarification, partially because I wasn't around when you first started talking about the dumpster corrals. Uh, I know when the last I'd heard about abandoning the, the artist alley, there was a talk about using city properties, but I was under the impression that the using city properties for murals was also buildings, not just dumpster corrals. I just wanna make sure, are these, is the dumpster corrals what we've narrowed it down to 
instead of using buildings or are they two separate things so I'm not confusing myself? Uh, one does not um, eliminate the other. Thank no. you for clarifying. That right. uh, I believe the other, uh, another one which would be a huge project is the water tank on the golf course. That was also, I think, identified as a, as a mural possibility. Mm -hmm. But it would have to be done by several artists because of the uh, fee restriction, you know, to uh, keep it within the realm of using the, um, you know, city's liability insurance. Robert, you had a, a question? I, yeah, I just want to know how, uh, what the surfaces of these uh, dumpster walls are like and the dumpster itself. Uh, uh, you know, how, how clean are these and how, how easily cleaned are these? And what about the, you know, are, are they trash collector dumpsters or, you know, it's, it, it, it just seems like it's a, you know, something that could be um, kind of unruly in a way. And it, I mean, I, you know, I, I'm from, from, a city vantage point, you know, sometimes dumpsters get dumped on. <laughs> and and uh, are these the kind of dumpsters that get picked up mechanically and emptied? And, and uh, it, how's that going to affect the painting on, on, uh, on, on all accounts? Can I answer that? Mm. Oh, please, yeah. The dumpsters themselves, which are picked up and dumped into the retrieval truck, uh, are within the corral. This project um, envisions doing the outside walls of the corral. So not the inside walls. Correct. Right. Oh, correct. okay. I was I was yeah. misunderstanding that. Yeah. Okay. No, it's it's the outside walls. Okay. All right. And um, the surface is the basic surface is concrete block. Some of them have been stuccoed nicely and painted. Mm -hmm. Um, others are just in their raw cement block form. All right. Okay. I, I was confused. I thought that the proposal was the dumpster itself and the, the, uh, the wall of the corral, right. the inside wall of the corral. Okay. Concrete enclosure. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, so Lucianne, do you want to take point on the call to artists for these or, uh, well, I, I think I'd like some feedback from the committee on do we want to put an effort here? Do we want to, in fact, pursue this as a venue for murals? Um, and uh, we do have one specific requirement from the city in order for the artist to be covered by the city's um, insurance their fee is limited to a thousand dollars so um yeah that's correct all dumpsters are not equal we would have to apportion right. we have to decide what our maximum fee is um for which dumpsters um and then apportion it by side so mm -hmm. i don't know do we do we like this project is this where we want public art to go for the immediate future um i think that's the first question to ask Right, Trish, um, you hand up. I think I think it would be a good thing, especially I like the one at the dog park. Uh, but I'm just wondering, uh, is the fee paid to artists? Does that include them buying their own paints and uh, materials? And because no, it's not. pre, you know, you got to precondition it, and that, so the city would buy the um, the paints. And no, no, the artists would buy the buy the materials they need, but they would be reimbursed, and that would be separate from the fee. Okay, thank you. So, uh, in other words, the thousand dollars represents the maximum fee paid to the artist, okay. plus whatever their uh, materials are. Thank you. So, uh, uh, Diane, do you want to clarify? You all, you have to decide on what a maximum is going to be for, for supplies as well. Right. You can't just have you know yeah, people supplying three thousand dollars worth of supplies. That's not going to fly. Right. So it can be expensive, Robert. So, so uh, is this going to be something that that you're going to see doing more than once on each side? Because with a with a thousand dollars and the materials and the limited amount, you're not going to you're probably not going to get um, 
um, a, a, a mural that's going to last for very long, you know, and uh, you'll be able to have people with different different skills of pre preparation and things like that for the for the mural. Um, so, uh, is it something that that you would consider as a committee that that these would be somewhat like the art boxes in a way, uh, chances for people to do them um, in a two-year basis or, or a three-year basis of, of repetition like that. Mm -hmm. so, so that you would have fresh, you would freshen them up as part of the program. And then again, create uh, renewed interest in the thing rather than it just becoming uh, a wall that uh, could possibly be tagged or graffitied or posters put, you know, billboard, you know, bills put up and things. So, yeah. so you're able to refresh it that way. Uh, Michaela, you were next, I believe. Okay. Um, Lucianne asked whether we should even pursue this idea. I honestly think that we would spend our money better. And if the city has larger walls doing more really artistic murals, the reason I'm thinking this, I rode up past the Pinellas Trail the other day and there's a dumpster structure that somebody had painted. And honestly, the quality was really such that I thought when I didn't notice the dumpster at all because it wasn't painted, it was less bothersome to me than something that was really <laughs> poorly executed. And remember, this will have the public art committee tag on it. So if we end up getting, and you get what you pay for with a thousand dollar artist fee kind of stuff, uh, maybe we would do better to do one or two quality murals on a bigger building that belongs to the city than to do a whole bunch of dumpster things that look like they're done on the cheap. And just because Lucianne brought up the idea that this is food for thought, that's that's sort of where I'm thinking. Right. The, the, you know, the, the thing is that that puts us right back in the, you know, you know, roadblock that we've, you know, found out with the artist alley with all of those uh you know liability insurance concerns trish yeah yeah i would like to see if we didn't do the other dumpsters which i i agree with with some of the comments about that i really like the dog park idea that's a big it's it would be a large it would you could have a lot of fun with it and uh maybe not do some of the others but i'm thinking too that in order to for the call to artists um this isn't something I don't think that a normal artist would be able to do a big mural because um, it requires expertise in how to prepare the surface and how to, uh, what kind of paints and what kind of um, glazes to use to make it permanent, to, uh, you know, to, to protect it against the weather. It just requires more expertise than like a normal artist would have. So. I mean, do we know enough um, experts in the mural business to um, to have a call of artists to artists, or is your thought to send it out to everybody? Yeah, I'm sorry. Were you finished, Trish? I'm sorry. Yes, yes, I am. Okay, Michiela. Um, you mentioned the liability issue being such a big hurdle, but you know, when I researched it on behalf of my husband in the past. It was sizable, but it wasn't insurmountable. So again, if you're doing a larger mural project on the side of a building by a professional artist, it was something like $600, which is a chunk of change, but it's not like we couldn't do that unless you would prefer to have, you know, well, spend the money on a whole bunch of dumpster enclosures or so. So I guess my argument is quality over quantity. Um, but I don't think the liability issue is as insurmountable as you thought when I looked into it for actual pricing. Okay, because uh, the artists that did get uh, liability insurance that met the standards set by the city attorney it was closer to 3000 Oh, okay. Diane, I think you can confirm that. Yeah. So... Well, it depends on the length of time, you know, that you have that insurance as well. Yeah. So this was a, a project that was going to take quite a bit of time. However, you know, the artists, when they're making their proposals, they can go ahead and, and um, 
look at how much it's going to cost them for insurance and, you know, and, and their supplies and everything and determine their fee when they propose it to the, um, you know, the public art committee. So mm -hmm. that's something too, you know, to consider. Trish? Yeah, I'm a little confused. I thought that the reason that we dropped the, uh, uh, the murals on the private property was because of the insurance and we were going to go to the public buildings and the public property because uh, the artists could use, uh, oops, I'm sorry, I thought I had that turned off, um, that the artists would be able to use the city's insurance. I thought that was the whole purpose of changing to the city, um, to the city property. No, the, the, the idea there, Trish, was that we'd have to have two contracts. If we do it on public space, we'd have to get a contract for the building owner as well as the artist. So if we're doing it on the city's property, then we don't need a contract because it is the city of Tarpon Springs building. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Right, because the, according to, uh, uh, you know, what I was told by uh, the city manager, at $1,000, the artist is considered a minor subcontractor legally. Right. of the city that's why they can be covered by the city's liability insurance so you'd have to do smaller projects you'd have to do smaller projects for the city to to be on city property right large buildings okay right Lucy that's when we went to the dumpsters right yeah no i was i was just going to cite that thousand dollar limit um so i you know seems to me that we're at a philosophical turning point you know do we want um, smaller projects that adhere to the city's limit of $1,000, or do we want to invest in um, bigger projects? Robert? Um, I just dropped something on my foot. Um, um, I, you know, the discussing this whole thing, I mean, you know, like, do we want to do this? I mean, we're, you know, this is the, you know, the, Tarpon Springs, you know, uh, you know, Art Council's idea, uh, you know, our, our name's going to be on this in a way. I mean, it's our signature. Do we really want to do this? I, I sort of see an attractiveness uh, to maybe doing the dog park because that's a very communal kind of happy place. And, and I also think doing the water tower uh, and, you know, suggesting doing that with, with multiple ar artists doing that so you can stay within that. Those are still going to be fairly large projects to oversee and to do, and they can have, you know, a maximum impact. They don't, you know, we don't have to do everything all at once in this. And uh, um, the the water tower project, you know, is, is there's a lot of consideration to that. You got to go up on the thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, and the the dog park thing is is again, there's this issue of uh, of uh, durability and and appropriateness for for that particular thing. And uh, I mean, I could almost see an artist being brought in to bring in the community to paint the dog park thing, something like that, rather than having an artist that just does their own vision of that, since it's a community thing. So I, I think I think of, of limiting to maybe just the, those kind of two projects and, uh, you know, uh, limiting our, our ability to focus on those. Diane? Keep in mind, if you read the call to artists for this project, that what we are trying to do with the call to artists is have them come up with a proposal that kind of matched the location of the dumpster corral. So that like, for instance, Sisler Field might have a baseball theme. The dog park might, of course, have a pets or you know, or something to do with the Splash Park, um, you know, uh, Craig Park, there's lots of oper different opportunities here. And the city golf course, um, the library, they can have their own themes too. So even though it's a little project, the whole idea is, is to take something that people consider an eyesore and give it some flair and something nice, you know, to for people to look at, you know, and instead of, you know, the, the ugly crowd. So, I mean, yes, it is a, 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 
minor project from, you know, a comparison of what Elizabeth Indianos is doing in cultural center, but, you know, it's also a nice way, like it, it's been talked about to get younger artists involved, you know, and this is an opportunity because they've got to do a proposal anyway. So you're going to see their artwork that they're proposing, or at least a sketch of it. So you can determine, you know, with their you know, what they're proposing and their sealant that they're going to use, whether it's viable or not, you know, yeah. for that. So just throwing that out there. Bill, you've been your usual talkative self. Do you have, do you have any comments? I like the idea of picking a, uh, a let's start with one um, and, and, you know, use it as a sample. And we will, I'm sure we'll learn what works and what doesn't work. Okay, everybody seems to be uh, enamored of the dog park. Lucienne, do you think that would be a good initial project? You have, you know, had more hands on looking at these. We can't hear you. <laughs> Sorry. Um, are, are you talking about the corral for the sand? Um, I haven't been to the sites. You have. The, uh, what what exactly is at the dog park? Is okay. it, that's there, are, there are two, two things at the dog park. There is a dumpster corral, only okay. one side of which is readily visible to the public. Right. Um, the other structure there is where the city brings in sand to dump. Okay. Yes. When yes. when it's offering sandbagging opportunities to the public, mm -hmm. um, most of the time that stands empty. It's um, it, it is on a page by itself. Dog park splash park, mm -hmm. uh, sandbag corral. Do you, do you all see that? Okay. Okay, so that's uh, a concrete block structure. It has a little brick edging, I think, at one point, but it's um, it's an L-shaped thing, mm -hmm. and it's visible from both sides. There's a, a sidewalk that goes around the back of it. Right. Um, so, how does everybody feel about getting our feet wet in the dog park? I like it. Do we do that as an initial project? I think that's a good start. Let me, may I ask, would we just use one artist to do that? That's a large surface for somebody to cover for $1,000. Maybe one for the inside and one for the outside. Yeah, I think we should have more than one artist on there. Yeah. Well, I think, well, I think if we put a call to artists, we're gonna, we'll see what we can get and then we can uh, decide, you know, how, how we're gonna deal with the, uh, you know, with the images and the artists, does that make sense to people? Yeah, I like that. Okay, so uh, I don't think we need a motion, Diane, do we? Uh, you know, I think, I think you should vote because okay. I was under the I was under the um, the assumption that this was already an approved project, mm -hmm. which is why we did the call to artists and everything. So right. I think uh, you should also vote on the maximum amount that you're going to pay for each artist to to do like the front and the back. Okay, so we're clear on that. All right, um, I'll entertain a motion. Anyone? I make a motion to uh, to begin the mural project with the. Um, the dog park, the splash park. Um, let's see, and have a thousand dollar limit per artist for their fee. For their fee, right? Plus, plus uh, the equipment, uh -huh. plus yeah. the cost of the equipment. Right. Or, or yeah, well, reasonable. Uh, yeah, expenses for materials. Exactly. Okay, do I hear a second on that? I'll second that. Okay. All in favor? Oh, Diane? No, I was just to say, please um, decide also what is your maximum amount and maybe um, you can decide like what, what is the maximum amount that you're willing to pay or reimburse for um, supplies. This, that, does anybody have a feel for what that would be reasonable? We have no idea what it would be cost. So, you know, we haven't done research on the cost of that. 
Okay. So yeah. do you want I think a lot of it put would... that in their proposal and then you'll approve it? Mm. Well, we don't know. We don't know what we're dealing with as far as cost. We don't know. Right. So I think it's uh, a lot of mural is um, actually charged by the square foot, and that's reflected, you know, reflection of their material costs. Is that is that a pretty accurate assumption? It really depends, I think, on the the type paint they use. I mean, the, mm. you know, whether they're spray painting, what kind of surface they they use to prepare, and what kind of you know, or whether they're brushing it on or whatever. I mean, it's uh, uh, it, it can so, be very different. Right. So would you um, would you agree that maybe we should just put in, please describe um, the materials you're going to be using and an, an, an estimated cost. Right. Yeah, right. I think a lot of a lot of them require that. You know, just right. estimated uh, budget right. that you have. Exactly. Okay. Okay. So Trish, you want to revise your motion? <laughs> uh, so well, I let me paraphrase yeah. it for you. That uh, we're going to be using the dog park and the splash park to uh, as the initial uh, parts of the, the mural project, and um, with a, a fee of a thousand dollars plus an estimated budget submitted at the time of their proposal correct okay exactly. to be approved by the public art committee before you know you know proceeding with any of the projects okay uh can i get a second on that i'll second it again okay thanks bill okay all in favor okay any opposed Absolutely. Okay. I'm sorry. Can you abstain? <laughs> well, <laughs> but it's, it's, it's passed. So, um, okay. Uh, the next one, I think we already did the updates on the current projects. Um, Sheila, uh, I believe your request about the sponge hooker nomenclature was dealt with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And do you want to discuss uh, your proposed themes for the uh, art boxes going forward? Uh, I just wanted to get, let you guys know, you know, when we had talked about it, I was under the impression we should all submit themes. And uh, apparently I jumped the gun, but uh, <laughs> uh, when we're ready to figure out what the next set of themes is, you can consider some of these suggestions. But until we have lots of suggestions from everyone, it seems crazy to just discuss my ideas. <laughs> so uh, I guess I just thought that you were asking us to submit theme ideas at the time that we discussed it previously. And that's what I did. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I appreciate your thought and your effort and we'll keep it in the files. And um, okay, um, Diane, any city announcements? No. Okay, we kind of jumped around the agenda here. Okay. Um, uh, the next regular meeting, uh, which I assume will be another Zoom meeting, will be on Tuesday, September 8th at 2 p.m. Uh, do I hear a motion to adjourn? I move that we adjourn. Okay, second. Second. Okay, we are, in a, we are adjourned. Thank you all for all of your effort and your input and your expertise. It's really appreciated. Take care. Take Thank care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.